So I have here another camera review and this is my Pentax K1000. Now this is a very popular camera, uh, especially for learning photography because it is a very basic 35mm um, film SLR and it doesn't have any real automatic features with the exception of um, the exposure meter but it doesn't have aperture priority or program exposure mode or anything like that. You have to set the shutter speed and the aperture yourself uh, according to what the meter says or you can also choose to ignore the meter. It was made for um, several decades uh, from about the mid 70s to about the mid 90s it was made in both um, in Japan and in China I think. According to the, um, the serial number on mine I think it was made in about 1990 so it's a relatively late one. The earlier ones um, had um, Asahi on the um, top of the prism in addition to Pantax, um, Asahi being the, the company um, which later changed its name to Pentax, I think, or at least the parent company of um, Pentax, Pentax being the name for the line of SLRs um, relating to the pentaprism which is inside. So, yeah, this is a very, um, very popular camera. Many, many photographers um, learned the trade on this and some simply continue to use it because they prefer it. It's very simple um, design. I myself um, learned photography when I was uh, at sixth form, uh, when I was at sixth form college, uh, I actually went up in, uh, to an evening course in photography, and uh, this is the camera that they had um, in the uh, in the in the college uh, to lend people to learn because they're so simple um, and relatively cheap as well, especially nowadays. Okay, so now I'm going to take you through the main features of the Pentax K1000, as the name suggests. It uses the Pentax K mount, which was a very popular um, lens mount in the 1970s and 80s, which replaced the Pentax um, or Pentacon M42 um, K, uh, screw mount. This was a uh, essentially an open standard. It was used by several companies, including Pentax, Arico, I think Pentacon, which I think was an East German manufacturer. So there were many lenses available, and each company's um, lenses could be used interchangeably with each company's cameras. You remove it by pressing the catch here and turning it anti-clockwise and the lens comes away and you can see the lens mount itself. So the red dot is for aligning the camera when you replace the lens and um, you can see inside the instant return mirror and the aperture um, instant uh, lever which allows the aperture to be open, it's an automatic aperture. And this is the um, lever which tells the camera what aperture has been selected on the lens. It has six screws, which is more than many cameras have these days. The other feature on the um, front of the camera is the flash socket. This camera doesn't have a um, self-timer. To replace the lens, you align the either the white dot with the, with the catch or the uh, index mark with the red dot, which can be a bit confusing. Line it up, turn clockwise until it locks. The only real remaining controls are on the top of the camera. So obviously we have the film advance lever, which is um, ratcheted. And that far and inside of that is the frame counter. And there is also a small um, window here, which tells you if the shutter has been um, activated or not and the film has been wound. So you can see at the moment that is a um, a red dot, and if you press the shutter, it clears into a grey dot. This is the um, shutter speed selector, and um, it has a speed from one second to one thousand, one one thousandth of a second. And the uh, shutter is entirely mechanical, which means that it will um, work even without the battery installed. The battery is only used for the exposure meter, which obviously means the camera will without, work without batteries. However you want to have the um, advantage of the exposure meter. The uh, speed of the film is selected here, it says ASA, which is uh, evolved into the ISO standard, but the uh, arithmetic portion of the ISO standard is the same as the ASA standard, so you select um, your film speed by lifting up the shutter speed and turning it and dropping it down. Um, the shutter is a horizontal travel 
focal plane, sh plane shutter and the fastest uh, speed you can use flash with is 1 60th of a second and it's marked with the X for X-Sync. This is the um, flash hot shoe which I've cut, put some tape on here because um, some of the uh, extra contacts on my Nikon uh, flash guns uh, can touch the exterior metal so I put this tape on here as an insulating barrier so I can use the Nikon flash guns in um, auto flash mode. The only other thing on the top uh, the top plate is the rewind crank which is fairly obvious, falls out to rewind the film once you press the rewind button on the base of the camera. You also use the uh, rewind crank in classic fashion to open up the back of the camera. Inside we have the place for the film to go uh, where the uh, prongs, the metal prongs of the um, rewind lever are located and obviously when it's lifted up it clears it for the film to be put in. We can see the shutter and you can see it's horizontal when it's wound on and flashes across. The reason for the X-Sync is the um, 60th of a second is the slowest speed at which the um, the fastest speed rather, at which the shutter exposes the entire film at once. At faster speeds, say one five hundredth of a second, um, the shutter only opens as a small slit which moves across the film um, at the same rate as it does when it is at one sixtieth of a second, except because it is only exposing a slit, the um, film is only exposed for an equivalent period of time. Uh, to 150 of a second, which also means that the film is not exposed um, at the same time. The area of the film is not all exposed at the same time, which means if there's something moving very rapidly in the um, in the frame, such as um, helicopter blades or something of that nature, or a very fast-moving vehicle, you will um, get a uh, distortion because the uh, the vehicle has moved during the time at which the um, a shutter has crossed the film and you get a distortion um, known as, I think, focal plane shutter distortion which has some relevance to how cartoons depicted um, fast cars after uh, that was invented. Uh, you can see on this side this is the slot for the film to go in and this is the crank for uh, counting on the film um, sprockets for the film advanced counter and on the back the only real object a couple of rollers and the film pressure plate. The only other feature on the base is the um, battery holder and the tripod mount and of course the film rewind knob. I'll just to open the battery you just take the coin and turn it anti-clockwise. And it takes a single LR44 battery which goes um, negative end down inside, you see the positive index on top and you simply screw it back in. It's a very standard sort of battery door for cameras that use those small button cell type batteries. You can see this is a somewhat scarred um, bottom plate but it's not really a precious camera, it's supposed to be used. So that is the main overview of the K1000 features. Now the viewfinder of the camera is located here uh, as a simple um, slot at the side for a rubber eye cup or similar or maybe perhaps a right angle finder and inside you will see uh, basically a plain um, focusing screen with the addition of a very quite faint a micrometer prism in the center which is a focusing aid but the viewfinder is quite bright so in fair light it's relatively easy to focus especially if you have a fast lens. If you had a, a zoom lens that had perhaps a 5.6 or a long lens that had a 5.6 maximum aperture you might struggle because you don't have in this camera or at least in this version of the camera um, a, a rangefinder prism type you would see. I think there was a version of this the Pentax K1000 SE that did have a micro, uh, a micro rangefinder in it, as my Nikon F3 does and many other um, manual SLRs did. On the right is the small um, 
indicator for the meter, which is a needle. And um, if the needle is towards the top, it means the um, exposure is too high, like overexposure, and if it's to the bottom, that indicates underexposure, and you um, move the either the shutter speed or the aperture or both until the meter needle is centered, and then you have proper exposure according to the meter. Now the meter is a simple um, area averaging meter, it doesn't have a particular center weighted um, bias, I don't think, if it does it's a very weak one um, and um, therefore you have to know when to compensate for the meter if you have mixed lighting in the scene or if you have something like snow which can cause cameras to underexpose, even quite advanced cameras, so in that way it's also a good way of learning how to use a camera meter without having to be over-reliant on a modern uh, matrix meter or evaluative meter as used in, mod in more modern cameras. Now a note on the lens, this is actually a Ricoh lens, it is not a um, Pentax lens. This is, um, simply got this on eBay to go with the camera which I also got from eBay. Uh, I got this because it's a 1.4mm lens, you'll more often than not see the Pentax K1000 with the Pentax SMC 50mm 1.7 lens which was the sort of standard kit lens in the days of manual SLRs before zoom um, lenses became um, common. Um, so this is a 52mm um, filter size which is the same as most Nikon manual lenses and as you can see it's 1.4 aperture so it has a very um, large front element and a very large rear element, very large rear element indeed and you can see it passes a lot of light through 1.4 is um, the uh, sort of next grade up from 1.8 which is the standard however uh, it isn't that much faster, it's only a half, um, about half a stop faster and doesn't make a massive difference. Uh, in fact it often results in greater distortion and the 50mm um, 50mm 1.8 will often be a slightly um, better quality lens for that reason, even if it is a marginally slower lens. Um, the focus uh, goes from about um, 1.5 feet, or about half a metre, down to infinity and it has obviously in both feet and meters it has a um, depth of field gauge up to f16 um, and f8 and f4 so that you can set the hyperfocal distance at f16 if you set the um, infinity mark to the left and left hand um, depth of field mark for f16 um, and set the aperture to f16 which obviously means you'll have to use fast film or be on a very bright day. Anything between um, uh, infinity here and uh, about um, two and a half meters will be in focus and that's called the hyperfocal distance and that's used um, to mean that you will seldom have to um, focus the uh, camera to anything um, for any subject that's greater than 2.5 meters away. Um, obviously you will need either fast film or bright light or both to um, do that in handheld. The minimum aperture of the lens is f16 which is somewhat slower. That's common with 1.4 and faster lenses. Um, and obviously when you're either wide open at f1.4 or um, you'll have uh, probably quite a bit of vignetting um, from the lens because you're wide open and at f16 you're probably getting into diffraction so that will start to uh, limit your sharpness so you're better off, as with all lenses, using this in sort of medium range unless you actually need the depth of field for the minimum aperture or the speed of the maximum aperture. In conclusion, this is probably a very highly classic camera, one of the most popular um, SLR cameras ever made and um, has been the start of many photographers' hobbies or careers. So I certainly recommend this to anybody who is um, wishing to learn um, proper um, manual photography without being reliant on modern um, advanced electronic cameras, obviously both film and digital. It's better to learn the basics before you move on to the advanced automation and that way you will know when um, to uh, change your camera settings uh, depending on the type of subject and also it's satisfying to know that when you look at the picture it is your decisions that have made it as good or as bad as it may be. So that's the Pentax K1000, a proper film camera of um, late 
last quarter of the 20th century.